Pokemon lore goes deep, and it gets dark. Real dark. For example, Beware's Pokedex entry states, and I quote, This Pokemon has the habit of hugging its companions. Many trainers have left this world after their spines were squashed by its hug. Excuse me? Well, one night I couldn't sleep, so I stayed up a little reading up on Pokedex entries before bed. And in my deep dive, I found a bunch of Pokemon whose lore actually alluded to or often outright stated that some of these Pokemon were dead. And that has layers like how, on one hand, a Pokemon like Spiritomb is formed by the unity of 108 spirits. But on the other hand, there are Pokemon like Annihilate, who comes to be when a Primeape finds its peril when its rage supersedes them. And in their evolution, the Primeape dies to awaken Annihilate. So as I dove deeper, as I read more and more, I got more and more excited to make this video. Could I beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Scarlet using only Pokemon who are dead. How many Pokemon even fit that role? Let's find out, shall we? My name is Gentle Dude, and I'm here to wreak havoc. To release and bring about the age of the undead. I think I'm gonna need a partner. As I was about to embark, I got a call from Jack, and I was selected to join in an adventure to a different region. Interesting. After reading up on Kitakami, I found out that there was a Pokemon there we could befriend. One that shares in our special interests. And that Pokemon goes by the name of Phantom. There was only one problem. Every single Phantom that I could find was left level 50. So after much deliberation, I found a loophole. I decided to try my hand at catching a Phantomp anyway. But gentle dude is level 50! Shut up, I know, shut up. To combat that, I traversed my way through Paldea, and in doing so, I stumbled upon something interesting. You see, I found a Drifloon, and Drifloon's Pokedex entry states that it steals children and takes them to the afterlife, which in of itself is messed up. However, there's an issue with that. That statement only makes Drifloon a murderer. It doesn't make Drifloon dead. But if you read into Drift Blim, you'll find that according to its Pokedex entry in Pokemon on sword. Drift Blim is a collection of souls burdened with regret, carried by the wind without a permanent destination in sight. A collection of souls! Yep, she did. She real did. I caught the Drifloon and kept traversing for my actual target. The elusive Ditto. But gentle dude, Ditto isn't dead! Shut up, I know. Shut up. I caught the Ditto and promptly flew back to Cortondo, where lives a sandwich shop that sells a jam sandwich that has the immediate effect of making Pokemon want to smoosh. So I eat the sandwich, leave Cortondo, watch my Pokemon touch butts, steal their offspring, run around for a minute, and now we can welcome a level 1 Phantom into the world. And according to its Pokedex, Phantom is a lonely grass ghost type Pokemon born from the lost souls of children who died in a forest. Phantom is dead children. <laughs> What? So we named our Phantom Wednesday and our Drifloon Morticia. On that note, we can go ahead and take on our first monarch. Our path to chaos begins here. <laughs> That's my evil laugh. Katie, let's do this. She leads our puny nimble and I lead Morticia, who after a whole lot of off-screen traversing has a pretty incredible moveset. Not that we need it. Both of Morticia's typings resist bug. See, I click minimize and we take one measly point of damage from the bug. I set up two more, taking exactly zero more hits before unleashing hell. Morticia has the flying Terra type, and so after terrestrializing a 110 base power stab Terra boosted acrobatics, floors the first Pokemon, and then the spider, and then in a last ditch effort, Katie brings out her teddy bear, terrestrializes it to the bug type, and gets acrobatics to two oblivion. That was easy, Cake Lady. You're nothing. With no hesitation, I pace forward to my next full cloth. Interesting detail about this cloth, it sucks. So I lead Wednesday, and after a leech seed and three branch pokes, the crab scurries away trying to escape our wrath. You can run all you like, crab. We'll fight you, there is no escape. Some wannabe runs up to help me out, not that we needed it, and starts attacking the crab with me. It makes for an unfair fight, but well, who cares about fear? I'm here with a purpose. We will corrupt Paldea and instill fear into those who inhabit, people and Pokemon alike. Hear me out here, what happened next was nothing short of miraculous. Some might say it was luck, but what you call luck, I call destiny. Oh my god. That's insane, because this actually fits in this run. There's no shiny charm. This is full odds, and it actually works for this video exactly. That's nuts! Okay, hear me out, right? I can't use two Drifloons. Surely that's not allowed, right? So, we're gonna use it because what in the heck just happened? But listen, Morticia isn't dead. I'm just gonna put her in the box. And if it dies, then we can replace it. Because that's insane. That's, that's, that's insane. How did that? I came back to try and catch this thing. And instead I got, cause of it. That's so crazy. So hear me out here. Charcadet's a funny one. Sure, it isn't dead, but when Charcadet evolves into Serulege, who's a bit of a controversial choice here, the fiery blades on its arms burn fiercely with the lingering resentment of a sword wielder who fell before accomplishing their goal. So the death resides in Serulege's blades, which are attached to it. Sure, it could be perceived that it's just its armor that's haunted, but I'd say that's up to the beholder, who in this case 
is me. And this is my villain arc. Be mad at me in the comments. I'll eat it for breakfast. Nom 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 nom. Evil dude's reign has come. There will be no survivors. Brassimus, get ready to watch your Pokemon perish. He leads a plant and I lead a wilted plant, which, uh, was an accident. I was supposed to lead it, our beautiful, shiny, child abducting, murderous soul balloon. On the switch in, we take a Mega Drain that doesn't do really anything and I decide to start setting up minimizes since Petalo doesn't really have anything for us. After three, I opted to use Sunny Day because I want a baton pass over to Enid the Chocolate. But the Petalo somehow landed a sleep powder past our evasiveness buffs. So we stay asleep for a second, then switch over. Enid takes a hit on the switch, but again, it doesn't do a whole lot. We use a flamethrower and burn the flower to a crisp. Then came the Olive, who followed in a similar fate. Finally, Brassius was bringing out his ace, Pseudo Widow. I land a Will O Wisp first turn, fearing the worst because we're weak to rock. Well, it turns out that my fear was warranted, because even through plus six evasiveness, this stupid wannabe tree thing landed a 90% accurate move. Sick. I switch over to Wednesday to take the oncoming hit. It only does 10 points of damage, so we're chilling. Another rock throw lands, and we retaliate with a shadow claw, which granted doesn't do much. But a few turns of back and forth mixed with leftovers recovery end in Wednesday, seeping the soul of our enemies, as per usual. We take the badge, and one more town is overcome in darkness, as the plague of evil dudes spreads. <laughs> that was worse than the first one. Since the Sky Titan is a bit of a menace, in that it hits stupidly hard, doesn't allow healing in between phases, and has three offensive stats, I figure we should pick up another super villain. Now, when I accidentally found the shiny balloon, I was actually looking for a Ghastly. So I went back to where I know Ghastly spawns and I caught one. According to Bulbapedia, Ghastly has no true form due to 95% of his body being poisonous gas, with the other 5% believed to be made up of the souls of those who died from said gas. That must be one stanky ass gas. <laughs> or one stanky ass gas, get what I'm saying? Ha ha ha, comedy. With that in the bag, I'm as ready as I'll ever be to fight the Sky Titan. So leading up to the fight, I was thinking about potential tactics, but to be honest, there wasn't much I could do. Turn 1, Gomez, our ghastly, takes an insanely hard rock throw before landing a hypnosis. And listen, as much as that was in the fate of RNG, I had Gomez hold a wide lens, which boosts accuracy by 10%, making hypnosis a 70% accurate move. The scales were tipped in our favour. Instantly, I switch over to it, praying Bombay stays asleep. And she does. The next turn, she stays asleep again, and it gets off a minimize. Then she wakes up, but it dodges the oncoming attack, and we get off another minimize. Then the the same thing happened next turn. We're now at plus six evasiveness. The quick claw procs and it uses Will-O-Wisp to burn the stork as we take a moderately hard attack. Now we dodge again and land a thunderbolt that does some solid damage. If this RNG keeps up, we're looking good. We dodge again and beat phase one with another T-Bolt. Listen, this is best case scenario. However, since we aren't permitted to heal between phases, I know this is where we're gonna have to say goodbye to Gomez. Arvin, I don't know what the plan is here, mate, but we're gonna lose. What's Gastly's HP? 11. I think Gomez just has to die on Honestly, I'm so sorry. Yes! Why? Why did it? Please land. Please land. Please land. Oh my god. Oh my god, this is possible. Oh my god, this is possible. Lovely. Okay. Please stay asleep. Oh my god, this is so good. Right, Nackley, just attack it. Just use a rock move. Oh my god, this is possible. If it stays. Oh my god, it was a crit. This is so good. Please stay asleep. Please stay asleep. Please stay asleep. Oh my god, yes! How? Oh my god! No way! No way did no one die. In no world do we survive that without a death. That's insane! Gomez! How did you do that? Somehow, every single team member made it out alive. Even though they're all already dead, they didn't die a second time. My friends, in the Paldea region, there roams one man more evil than the notorious evil dude. One person more cynical, more corrupt, more unholy, more synonyms. My heart stopped as he approached. El Pompador. The truest form of evil. He said words and I nodded and agreed. I shook hands with the devil and his name was Clive. I'm surprised that we made it out alive. Ha, <laughs> that rhymed. It's like I'm a poet and I didn't even know that I was rhyming those words. Anywho, after flying too close to the sun, it's time we show the dark crew what true darkness looks like. Their leader, Giacomo, leads his Ponyard, and I lead it. The Quick Claw procs, not that we need it to, and we land a Will-O-Wisp turn one. The Ponyard uses Metal Claw, which in all honesty is pathetic. However, they do get the attack boost, then the next turn I opt for a Minimize. We proceed to avoid an attack, and the next turn we use Minimize again. Then after avoiding another attack, we get the final one off before taking a pretty hard Metal Claw. Finally, it's time to click Cam Mind, which I managed to pull off twice before Giacomo realizes that he has a release. A move that is physically in 
incapable of missing. You, my friend, are a cabbage. I baton pass over to Enid, our char cadet, who dodges a metal claw on the switch. Then, after taking a hit, a terror boosted flamethrower floors the poniard. The Starmobile comes in and opts to use Swift, which doesn't do really anything. A flamethrower does a whole lot, and we manage to dodge a few wicked torques, which result in Enid absolutely obliterating Giacomo and his Ford F 150. I've said it once, I'll say it again. A Starmobile is not a Pokemon. You cannot change my mind. After wiping the floor with the face of our enemies, the Paldea region is quickly realizing the power that it's faced with. The contagion is spreading and nobody can stop it. Wherever I go, people part like the Red Sea. There are wanted posters all over the place and yet nobody is willing to stand up against me. And those that do fall prey to the undead. <laughs> was that better? I think that was better. Since word is getting out and a target is being placed on my back, I think it's time we make a couple of changes, don't you? Off the rip, I had a disciple of mine send over an item called the Malicious Armor, which when paired with an innocent little char cadet turns her into whatever an evil version of a heroine is. But that's not all I can do. Nay, my friends, for just north of La Vincia, there's a Pokemon that we can recruit for the cause. Bramblin are created when wandering souls unable to move on get tangled and fused to dry grass. Bramblin's main form of locomotion is the wind, which blows it uncontrollably to destinations unknown. What an unfortunate afterlife. So I catch the tumbleweed, name it Thing, and before moving on, I take her for a little walk. But gentle dude, why? Shut up, I'm getting to that. Shut up. Bramblin evolves in a super niche way, so by walking 1,000 steps, then feeding it a rare candy, our little tumbleweed becomes a bigger, slightly creepier one. I beat the crap out of Nomona's Pokemon, and now, finally, we can play hide-and-seek with someone's granddad. Sick. Iono, stop stalling. Your fate is sealed. All you're doing is prolonging the inevitable. It's time. Iono leads her silly pigeon, and I lead our trusty child abductor. But gentle dude, electric's super effective against flying. Shut up, I know, shut up. I beat up some children for some guy who gave me an Eevee light so we can take a hit or two. Turn one way out speed and get a minimize off. Then we get paralyzed, which really sucks. So after taking another silly hard spark, I click baton past the next turn over to our freshly evolved Enid, who looks just elegant as all crap. We land a Will-O-Wisp off the rip to nerf the damage output of the Watrol, then we dodge an attack. I click Swords Dance and we avoid an attack off the rip. Another Swords Dance and we get hit by a spark and we don't get powered. It's a good day. Finally, we get our last Swords Dance off and Watrol goes for pluck. So we're in the clear. A Shadow Claw smacks up the bird, then Loxio comes in. Even past Intimidate, a Shadow Claw one shots. Now Belly Bolt. Easy peasy. Miss Magus is last, but she terrestrializes and outspeeds Enid and goes for a Confuse Ray, which is genuinely terrifying. Oh my god, it outspeeds. Please, please. Please, please break through. Break through. Please, please, please. Enid! Uh, oh, Enid, I need you to break through. Please. Yes! Please. Oh my god, that's really bad. <gasps> oh my god! That's insane! Oh my god, that's insane! Yes! That's so lucky! Oh my god! God, that could have been terrible. With Gym 3 in the back and no double deaths, the new level cap allows for a pretty cool team change. Gomez is evolving, let's go! Oh, look at him. He still doesn't have a torso, but look at him. I was heading in to obliviate the world of Mela and our team of posers when I felt a presence of evil. A darkness overcame me and a wind chilled through my body as if to tell me, he's behind you, El Pompador. I kept my head down, silently praying for mercy under my breath, knowing with each inhale, it could be my last. Should he decide that. But for whatever reason, he spared me this time. Bella, however, wasn't as scary. I have Enid, who has flash fire. Not only that, but Enid is a ghost type. This Starmobile only has four moves. Screech, Swift, Overheat, and Blazing Torque. Two of those attacks are fire, which get negated by our ability. And the other is a normal type move, which doesn't affect ghosts. So Enid is the perfect Pokemon for this battle. This fight was insulting. The fact that you lot are considered strong bewilders me. You deserve this. I chased the worm until it submitted to me, and then I beat it up without any issues. Then I chased it again and beat it up without any issues. Before taking on another silly little gym leader, I had to go down to a silly little market and take the contents of an old guy's wallet to bid on a handful of seaweed. So I did and then I walked away with the 15,000 bucks I had spare. I mean, sick. Now, before heading back to Cascarafa, I can feed my balloon a candy that I found. I wonder what that'll do. Yes! Look at our Thrive, bro! Look at that collection of souls. You're so adorable. Look at this little quiff. <laughs> you know, I actually like Cascarafa. It's a pretty chill little city with lots going for it. Too bad it'll be barren when I'm done. Nobody can escape this. The darkness is coming. I'm gonna make an example of your silly little gym leader. He leads a fish and I lead our freshly evolved it. We outspeed and burn Veloza off the rip, then take an aqua cutter. Now we opt for minimize to raise our evasiveness. We avoid the next attack and so we're free to get off the last one before baton passing over to Thing. On the switch we dodge an attack and then a loaded dice boosted bullet seed ensures the 
knockout. Wog Trio comes in next and lands a weak water pulse, and we don't get confused, so our bullet seed does the job. Finally, this overconfident, overbearing, overaged, overeager fisherman sends out his crab, who he then terastalizes. However, a bullet seed outspeeds and hits three times, so his Pokemon gets instantly graved, so we can walk away with his money, his gym badge, and his pride. Before moving on, however, I traverse across the universe to find a modest mint that I can feed to my floating head, whose stats go from this to this. Now, a big team change happened, but you won't be able to see it because the footage looks like crap. My PC had a heart attack. I apologize. But there's nothing I can do about it, so listen, you're just gonna have to take my word for it. So I head over to fight Atticus in the world's most anticipated evil off, but someone beat me to it. El Pompadour. I, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't realize this was your kill. I, I'll back off. You can sense my fear. I can't keep running into him like this. It's, it's detrimental to my health. However, out of sheer pity, he lets me go and take on Atticus. He'll find another imbecile to consume. Finally, Atticus, I abhor you. If you were on fire and I had a glass of water, I'd drink it. Anyway, he leads Skuntank, wishes a plague on my house, and then tries to use Sucker Punch. I set up on Enid before promptly realizing that, um, it's raining. Cool. Okay, so after coming to my senses, I used Taunt before switching to it, who I had equipped with a Petra Berry just in case. We take a Venishock on the switch, then I opt to start using Minimize. We back and forth for a few turns until the Taunt wears off and the Skunk uses Toxic. Anyway, I have it use Calm Mind being weary of how much damage Toxic is building up, you know, so that I don't lose her in a very silly way. Eventually, it's time to Baton Pass out to Gomez, who is now a loud and proud Gengar. I use Thunderbolt and then the Skun Tank falls instantly. The next turn, when Reverum comes out, we outspeed and one single psychic takes it out. Muck comes in and follows in the same fate. Before finally, Atticus brings out his Starmobile. But one psychic does about 90% of its health bar, so after we dodge both attacks, Gomez emerges victorious. You know, it feels good to be this good. My next encounter was going to be an interesting one for sure. You see, I know it spawns outside Medali, but I ran around for about 15 minutes before finding one, and when I found it, it was just chilling in a tree. My guy, you don't even have fingers. How did you get up there? Regardless, I threw a ball at him, he fell off the tree, I threw another ball at him, called him Pugsley, taught him Rage Fist, and used that 20 times in a row before growing him one level so that he could, well, die. So Primeape doesn't fit our description. However, Annie Halapi's Pokedex entry states, and I quote, when its anger rose beyond a critical point, this Pokemon gained power that is unfettered by the limits of its physical body. My guy got so angry that he died. Pugsley fell into a fit of dark rage that overcame his physical being. Now all that's left of him is darkness and some handcuffs. For angry reasons or for sexy time reasons, we'll never know. But that's not my business. So probably moving on, Enid went on a bit of a frenzy in a restaurant and we got banned for life. But it's fine. We got what we came for. Larry's badge and the souls of his Pokemon. Heading forth to Montanavera, the most ludicrous thing that could ever happen, happened. Listen, I know the full odd shiny Drifloon was crazy because Drifloon actually fits this Nuzlocke. But who on this earth could have predicted that that would happen again? Just on a hill, literally in the city, I found a full odd shiny Pokemon. And not only that, but it was a Pokemon who fits this Nuzlocke. Excuse me, what? Bayonet's Pokedex entry state. They are said to be abandoned plush dolls possessed by cursed spirits. Yep, that actually happened. After freaking out for a solid hour, I decided to make the executive decision that our starter Wednesday should be able to evolve by now. I had my friend hop on and trade with me so that when our baby Phantom hit his game, it would evolve. So with that, my friends, Wednesday, our Phantom has evolved into Wednesday, our Trevenant. What a fantastic Pokemon. Creepy as all hell, but fantastic nonetheless. So let's go show Rhyme what a real ghost looks like shall we? Knowing that she leads Bayonet and Mimikyu, I lead Gomez and Enid. Turn one, I forgot to terrestrialize, so Enid takes a super effective shadow sneak. Then Gomez puts Mimi to sleep with a hypnosis. Enid then proceeds to one-shot the Bayonet with a super effective shadow claw. So far, so good. Rhyme brings in Houndstone, and the crowd enjoyed the fact that I killed our Pokemon so much that they shouted at me, and for whatever reason, that gave my Pokemon attack boosts across the board. Sick. I have both my Pokemon target the Houndstone and it falls after both hits. Now Rhyme brings in our ace, Toxtricity, who is our last Pokemon. But Gomez just outspeeds and as a result, one-shots it with ease. Mimi stays asleep, so after breaking its disguise with Shadow Claw, the next turn, we double target and wipe it out. If I'm being real, that was the easiest fight of this whole run. Against the Earth Elephant, I just had Wednesday burn it and use Horn Leech a whole bunch. And in the second phase, I didn't even have to burn it. You guys are pathetic. Before pressing on to Tulip, something super weird happened. In that, I went to do the 
the pre-gym capoeira session and for some reason my Gengar broke. Listen, I know we're trying to corrupt the region, but that's not exactly what I meant. I've never even seen that. Why the hell does Gomez look like that? Regardless, I caught a Grievard, but for some reason I can't seem to locate the footage. Again, you're going to have to take my word for it. Anyway, before going in to fight Chulop, I want Jelinski the Grievard to become Jelinski the Houndstone. I could achieve this by waiting until the day cycle turned to night and growing it one single level. Easy peasy. According to its dex entry, Houndstone is a large skeletal canine Pokemon reborn from a lovingly mourned deceased Pokemon. Not a deceased dog, a deceased Pokemon. So Houndstone is actually something else. Maybe a Marowak. Hmm, interesting. So with our freshly evolved Jelinski and a slightly less than completely functional Gengar, it's time to take on Alphornada. Chulop leads for a graph and I lead it. What a surprise. Listen, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Turn one way out of speed and land a Will-O-Wisp since this thing is purely physical. I managed to get a Minimize up before switching, so then I baton pass over to Gomez who finishes off the giraffe. Then when Gardevoir comes out, I decide to click the Terra button so the Shadow Ball is a guaranteed KO. Spathra comes out, but one Shadow Ball floors the Emu. Finally, the floor just comes out who tanks a hit before messing up petal blizzard and eroding to one more shadow ball. We take the battle, we take the badge. I make haste to the Glaciado gym where our final gym conquest resides. Can't lie though, the Glaciado gym is literally just in the middle of nowhere. It's the only one without a city, which is strange. Regardless, I stare Grusha directly into his stupid gorgeous stupid eyes and after a moment of weakness, a shared blush and tension so thick you could taste it, I sent out Enid. Frostmoth comes in but turn one way out speed and so a terror boosted bitter blade does more than enough to incinerate the ice moth. Grusha brings in a bear and the bear dies. Grusha sends in a whale, and the whale doesn't die. But then, the whale dies. Better Blade, on top of doing a ludicrous amount of damage, is a recovery move, so we get back to a decent amount of HP before Grusha brings in Altaria, who terastalizes and falls to one super effective Fire Terra Bitter Blade. I melted straight through his ice. My friends, it's been an interesting journey so far. Two full odds shinies, and both of them are actually pertinent to the concept of this run. And now, I'm realizing that we're deathless. We've just beaten the final gym leader, and not a single Pokemon has died. I'm not gonna jinx it, but listen, I think this might be possible, you know, without any ritual sacrifices. I head off to take on Ortega, but before I even get the chance, a presence emerges. You can hear me, can't he? He's everywhere. I heard that El Pompador can conversate with snakes. I heard he sleeps upside down like a bat. I heard he drinks his own blood. Well, I heard that El Pompador isn't subscribed to the Gentle Dude YouTube channel. I daren't be the one to correct him though. He's just too scary. He lets me walk again. Why though? Why would he let me continue taking over this region? What is his endgame? Regardless, I'm still here and I still have my mission. Ortega, this is happening. He drives out to me with a smug look on his face, a cane in his hand and a star Mobile at his beck and call, but I'm gonna put him in his place. I lead Jelinski for no other reason than to get some charms off. Then once I've gotten all three, I switch over to it, take an attack, miss a Will-O-Wisp, take another attack, miss another Will-O-Wisp, get charmed, land a Will-O-Wisp, and finally, we can start conducting some business. I set up minimizers before getting off a whole bunch of cam mines and baton passing over to Gomez. What a pair these two make, eh? Anyway, Gomez dodges a player off on the switch end and lands a sludge bomb which corrodes the Azumarill right in front of my very eyes. The same goes for Dash Bun, Wigglytuff, and finally, Ortega, the cocky little gerbil, brings in his car as if he's got the upper hand. Off the rip, Gomez dodges a steel roller and then floors the Starmobile in one. Team Star, <laughs> posers, every single one of you. I don't even need another encounter. Paldea trembles at my wake already. But hey, let's do it anyway. Spiritum is literally 108 wandering spirits united in that weird keystone thing. That's it. Spiritum is 108 dead people. Sick. Okay. Moving on, I beat up a catfish whale dragon and its sushi roll, then head off to square up against Eri when all of a sudden a silence consumed the area and a presence lingered. Plants wilted, skies darkened, and El Pompador approached. What do you want from me? Stop playing with my emotions! Either kill me or don't. I can't take this anymore. He says nothing and instead shakes his head and walks away. I don't know how to take that, so instead of dealing with my trauma in a healthy way, I take it out on Eri. Go Gomez saw my rage, and in his bloodlust, we one-shot every single Pokemon that Eri sent our way, including her stupid Starmobile. Gomez, by the way, has single-handedly floored every single Team Star Pokemon of the last two fights. Finally, we can head into the so-called Elite Four, which is some silly ragtag group of monotype misfits who stand on their pedestal and abduct children, apparently. But regardless, welcome! 
to the end game. Rika tries to be a hero and faces me first. Good luck with that. West Cash comes out and I send in Wednesday. Now we take a blizzard off the rip but counter that with a quad effective horn leech that one shots the whisker fish and brings hump day back up to full health. Rika brings in a lava camel and I think I need to switch. I choose Fester and on the switch in get Yonda. The next turn Fester takes a fire blast then misses hypnosis and in turn falls asleep. Sick. Okay that was useless. I switch over to Gomez who takes a nasty fire blast before I realise this maybe isn't gonna be as easy as I imagined. I switch over to Pugsley who avoids the oncoming attack then outspeeds and lands a stomping tantrum. Then the camel tries to put us to sleep but Pugsley's ability doesn't let it and we win that fight without even taking damage. Dawnfan comes in and I click Brick Break. We take an EQ then Brick Break again then take an EQ then Brick Break again. I opt to switch over to Wednesday to take a now not very effective attack and then the next turn a horn leech knocks out the elephant. Doug Trio comes in and on the first turn sets up a sandstorm. I go for growth with Wednesday. I click out again predicting a sucker punch and I was right. They keep trying to suck a punch so in my eyes I can keep setting up. The damage we're taking from sandstorm we're regaining back in Lefty's recovery anyway so once we're set up enough that I'm confident that we one shot I terastalize the grass type take now a neutral sucker punch and floor the ground sausages. Now Rika brings in the ace Claude Sire who terastalizes protects to waste my time and then falls to one single horn leech. Cool. Who's next? A child. I see. She leads an elephant and I lead Enid. I terastalize to the fire type and bitter blade. The elephant dies. Bronzong comes in so I bitter blade again. The Bronzong dies. A taxi bird comes in so I bitter blade and the taxi dies. A magnet comes in but it has sturdy so it doesn't die. It lights greens which is dumb and then it dies. Finally Tinkaton. The child terrors and I use bitter blade so Tinkaton dies. Who is next? Oh it's that guy that I fought in that restaurant that one time. Back for more I see. He leads a banana tree I lead it. I get a quick claw proc and go for minimize turn one and the Tropius goes for Sunny Day to activate its chlorophyll, which gives me an idea. It dodges the oncoming attack and goes for Baton Pass to keep the minimize boost. And we switch over to Enid, the fire type, in the sun, against the grass type. Anywho, we get air slash flinched, but it doesn't matter because the next turn of Bitter Blade floors the Tropius. Staraptor comes out and does a crazy amount with a Brave Bird, but Bitter Blade recovers enough that I'm confident in Enid surviving unless we get an unlucky crit. She takes the hit and a cycle cut sends the bird to his grave. Larry then brings out Altaria and I opt to switch over to Fester who sort of tanks the oncoming Dragon Pulse. Next turn we take a super effective Moonblast and miss a Hypnosis. Fester is useless. I switch again but this time to Gomez. We take a Moonblast but because of Gomez's typing it doesn't do much at all. I land a Hypnosis then switch over to it while Altaria sleeps. I manage to get off all three minimizers before Baton passing to Gomez to give him the evasiveness boosts. And so he has no trouble flooring the Cloud Dragon. Oracorio comes in, takes a Sludge Bomb, gets poisoned, lands a crazy hard Revelation Dance crit. And next turn for to another sludge bomb. Good lord. If someone's gonna die, now's gonna be that time. Larith brings out his ace Flamigo and I know I can't switch. We have plus six evasiveness and nobody can take two hits. I terra ghost, Larry terra flyings. Larry terra's flying? But the Flamigo survives a shadow ball. I think, um, I think Gomez is about to... Dodge a brave bird! Let's go! One more shadow ball seals it and we take the dub without losing anybody. That was far too close for comfort. Our last challenge is Hassel. He leads his Noivern and I lead Jelinski holding the assault vest. My plan is to snarl as many times as I can and so once I've done that I can switch over to it. We take an insanely weak air slash then get flinched. Sick! We get the minimizers off then since we're in just a beautiful position I use Cam Mind a whole bunch to set up before Baton passing to Gomez. Then Gomez literally outsped and one shot Every single Pokemon that Hassel threw out. Pathetic. Now, where are you hiding her? The one they call Gita. Yeah, I've heard of you. I've been told you're a champion. Ha 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 ha. Not for long. See, I'm the Grim Reaper, and I'm here to claim what's mine. Top champion Gita leads an emu. I lead a hot air balloon. I use Minimize before realizing that this thing has opportunist. So I set up a tailwind before Baton passing straight back over to Gomez. We avoid an attack, and a single Shadow Ball graves Gita's lead. She brings out a coffee table, and I opt to sludge bomb it. Avalog barely survives and gets poisoned but lands a really nasty crunch before falling to the poison. Gita brings out King Gambit who has both a terrifying ability and a terrifying move in Kowtow Cleave. I switch to Pugsley to take it then terastalize for maximum damage output. A quad effective Brick Brick deletes the samurai and Gita brings in Gogo. I switch over to Enid correctly predicting a play rough and then I set up a swords dance taking a zen headbutt as a result. It's no worries though because a single bitter blade floors the goat and Enid gets back her health. Gita brings in a fish who falls to a single scope lens shadow claw crit and finally her ace hits the field. The alien rock flower. I don't want to take any unnecessary risks here so I switch over to Jelinski and watch as Gita terras her mon. An earth power barely does anything on account of the assault vest but then out of nowhere Gita lands a crit. I don't want Jelinski to die. Again.
So I switch into Wednesday to take the oncoming Terror Blast. She tanks it, and so even though the next one brings her down to 35 HP, a Horn Leech plus leftovers means that she can take another hit, landing on 35 HP again, and this time flooring the Glamora with one more Horn Leech. How fitting that the first Pokemon we ever got was the Pokemon to take down the champion. That's it. The Paldea region is on its knees. Hassel wept because he knew they were no match for our darkness. However, there lingered a thought that I just couldn't escape. Why did the Il Pompadour? Or let me get this far. What was he planning? The stupid ex-champion and her stupid lackeys told me that they'd been on to him. He isn't the kingpin. He answers to one they call Sada. I had to find this Sada. So I located their hideout, embarked on a perilous journey until I finally reached her. This was an evil unlike I'd ever seen. Artificial havoc. Genius. I would commend it if I wasn't about to destroy it. It stands atop its podium and throws its Pokemon down at me. But I knew what had to be done. Jutlinski led and charmed three times to negate the Slitherwing, but once we got all three off, I realised it would be smarter to let Jelinski fall than to switch her out, so that's exactly what I did. I let Jelinski die so that it could comfortably switch in. A few minimizers did what they needed to do, and a few calm minds allowed me to comfortably switch to Gomez. Gomez used Psychic and the bug fell. The Mushroom came in, Gomez dodged a Sucker Punch and one-shot it. The Primitive Magnet came in, but one Shadow Ball again one-shot it. Screamtail. Gomez got outsped and took a crazy hard Zen headbutt before before retaliating with a super effective Shadow Ball that one shot. Fluttermane came in and landed a Shadow Ball, but Gomez, the absolute demon, held on with two measly points of health. Finally, Sada brings in her ace in all its glory, but it was no match. Gomez dodges and with one single sludge bomb, it's over. We prevail. <laughs> okay, so uh, subscribe please or click one of these videos because I, I want to be a YouTuber when I grow up. So feed the dream or something. All right, bye.